Welcome back, everybody, to what I hope is going to be a fun, interesting podcast edition for you. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of reviews on some video games I found primarily through the PlayStation Plus network. I am actually just plain and simple a PlayStation player. I have uh, dabbled in playing on the Xbox before. It was a controller issue for me, just like people that become, you know, iPhone slaves, unfortunately, like myself. People become PlayStation or Xbox or uh, non-console as far as PC gamer uh, snobs. So, to each their own, gamers unite regardless. Welcome to this episode of The Barbershop. Let's get into it. In true barbershop fashion, I am drinking on a Blue Moon. Super crisp, very refreshing for a Belgian white. I don't believe right off if I've experienced any other immediate Belgian beers. More than likely I have. However, nothing right on top of my tongue. Because I'm so overwhelmed by the flavorful, citrusy, fantastic deliciousness of Blue Moon. It is a Colorado-based beer, and uh, I'm enjoying it straight out of the bottle. However, sometimes you really just got to go ahead, go find an orange, get you a wheel, plop it in there after you've poured yourself a nice, tall, cold, frozen mug of Blue Moon. First game I want to talk about is called Valiant Hearts the Great War. This came out back in 2014. It, it looks like an adorable little game that is an old-school sky scroller. It's uh, from Ubisoft, the creators of uh, Assassin's Creed and much more. This little video game uh, shares four different characters' points of views as uh, the French during the Great War. Uh, it's a survival game. It looks just adorable for uh, the cinematography of it, the animation style of it. Uh, it's just very pleasing to the eye. Um, got a heartwarming looking story. You get to experience, uh, again, the, the four different characters. There's a uh, a gentleman fighting for his freedom. There is a uh, old older farmer who is a, a chef, I believe, that gets pulled in uh, for his skills to cook to be able to serve. There's a younger man who gets taken away from his family, and apparently you play uh, as a dog at some point. So again, just sounds like it would be a really fun little story to get to experience, and uh, the use of the layering technique uh, as far as foreground, background, midground. Look like they're just going to be really awesome and aesthetically pleasing to just witness and play through. Highly recommend. If you want to give it a shot, go for it. The next game I want to talk about is Chicken Police Paint It Red. This came out in 2020, still pretty new. Uh, the entirety of what I have seen, have not played, of this game made me just sit there and debate what the fuck I was actually looking at. It is an old school black and white style, uh, like, New York detective game where you literally play as a chicken. Uh, they are uh, anatomically incorrect because you're not a full body chicken. You are a humanoid being detective with a chicken head. And you're trying to follow leads, talking to elephants and giraffes and cats and all kinds of rabbits, all kinds of things as you interview, take notes, and make dialogue decisions based on what kind of information you get off the game. Uh, highly recommend it. It looks entertaining as hell. Uh, by all means, give it a shot. Uh, looking it up on YouTube first, trying to find some walkthroughs, let's plays, anything like that. But uh, another crazy kooky looking game you can find through the PlayStation Plus. I myself am just a, a, a basic PlayStation Plus uh, subscriber. I don't currently have extra or the premium and yet uh, it would come for free with Extra. All of these games I'm about to mention would come for free uh, through PlayStation Plus Extra. Otherwise, they're going to be roughly, you know, uh, $4, or $5, $20, whatever the price tag is going to be. Third game I want to talk about is called Hello Neighbor. It's an indie game that uh, is, is very colorful, feels very nostalgic with the cartoony feel uh, and the visuals. It is a survival horror full of plenty of little goofy jump scares. I'm not sure how long ago it was, actually, but... Basically, you are a kid who is attempting to uh, retrieve a ball from your neighbor's backyard who has taken it from you. The neighbor has taken it inside and apparently is doing some shady shit. So as a nosy kid, you are trying to discover what the secret is in the house of this neighbor who's just giving, you know, the creepy vibes. It is, uh, again, it's on PlayStation Plus. It's on the PlayStation Store, roughly about like $19.99, $20. And this one is brought to us by uh, the THQ Nordic. Another game that I really enjoyed way back in the day, I want to say 2015-ish, this is a much older game, back in my uh, college days with my fraternity brothers was Needhog. Uh, not only is it named after the giant serpent that gnaws at the roots of the Yggdrasil tree from Norse mythology, but it definitely incorporates that as uh, at the end of the game, as you are fighting your way, this pixelated uh, little version of you is sword fighting or hand-to-hand -hand melee combating against either your friends or against uh, the, the, the NPC, the computer. 
And as you are trying to do this tug of war with who gets the furthest, uh, not so much how many times do you die matters versus who gets from the side scroll level one, level two, level three to the end of their level, or do you go negative a level and uh, have the your friend or the NPC push you back? If you're the one that is dead at the end of the furthest level, uh, the Need Hog comes and chomps you up, comes and eats you. It's hilarious. It, it was a ton of fun to play, and uh, definitely recommend if you can give it a give it a find, go for it. Last game I want to talk about with God of War Ragnarok being expected to be coming out later here in 2022. I'm wanting to mention God of War Four, what is known as God of War Four. Originally, it is just a self titled. It is actually the eighth game in the God of War series, starting back in 2005. We had the original God of War followed by God of War Two. Which then kind of sprung off. We had the Chains of Chaos. We had uh, Ghost of Sparta. And then it broke into God of War 3 and then Ascension. And uh, yeah, currently we have Kratos who uh, is our main main playable character that has tackled the Greek pantheon and has moved on and is living in the realm of the Norse. Uh, the series personally I think has aged very well. It's a button masher with unlocking puzzles um, as you play through and figure out your way to progress in the game. As well as a little bit of hidden have fun trying to find the Easter eggs and the, the treasure collectibles. So if you're a treasure hunter there's plenty to look for. Uh, it's it's a little bit open world, but also somewhat linear along a storyline. There's not really the side quests um, in, until you reach like the Lake of Nine, where you can go and find all of the uh, the disembodied spirits that want to be laid to rest properly, so on and so forth. It has been a lot of fun to play. Uh, this is my second playthrough that I'm working on, and I can't believe how much I missed in my initial first playthrough. Another thing that's been really cool about uh, the way God of War 4 has incorporated a secondary companion, uh, it's Kratos' son, Atreus, and versus the, uh, like, like best example I have has got to be in the Bioshock series where you're escorting somebody, especially Bioshock Infinite, uh, you don't have to worry about Atreus as like an escort pain in the ass who's going to keep getting hurt, or like in Resident Evil 4, when you continue to have to take the little girl with you and every time you're through uh tramping your way through the woods bitch steps in a bear trap and for some reason it's your fault pain in the butt absolute pain however happily god of war 4 not the same thing he's definitely more of a uh additional add-on to the main player for strategic purposes ton of fun highly recommend give it a shot currently available through playstation plus and extra for free uh, and I believe it was just last month, so I'm, I'm just a tad too late in putting out this episode, but it was just last month when I got this game for free, being a PlayStation Plus member. Now, I'm not sponsored by PlayStation, but I should be. So, any of y'all that happen to know anyone over in PlayStation, you send them this episode. Guys, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. That's really all I have for you today. I was able to really kind of push through, get everything out that I wanted to get out. I do have scheduled interviews with Cody Grable and a secondary scheduled interview with Scott Patchlack coming up for you, and I will be trying to make sure that I give those guys proper amount of time to leave those interviews up so you all can enjoy it. I'm also doing a little bit of research trying to find out a different platform to be using, so I will make sure to send out you guys the uh, the barbershop is still what we're going to be called. We're just probably going to be coming from a different platform anything that i can still reach you guys either on spotify or i'm going to have to start up a youtube channel it'll probably be a really boring video because this is an audio medium only but i want to make sure that you guys don't have to miss out on episodes because of a timing issue or because of a storage issue and we will just kind of continue to go from there so as long as the lights are on and there's beer in the fridge there will always be the barbershop